Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here today with Rupesh Varier, who not only is a Haas MBA, but is also Director of Mobile Insights and Innovation uh, at American Express. Welcome, Rupesh. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Professor. So, so Rupesh, um, you've talked a lot about um, what it takes for an organization to launch uh, a big data initiative. Mm -hmm. um, and you said it's not just about the infrastructure, it's not just about the analytics, it's not just about uh, the, the business knowledge and the business content, it really requires some kind of uh, integrated strategy around processes and around culture and around investments. Could you uh, describe what that looks like and describe sort of how uh, you've seen these sorts of transitions take place at the companies you've worked with? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, the transition is one part of the aspect. The other aspect is also about what kind of roles each person has to play. So the first one, I'll talk about the role. And typically what happens is uh, in organization, you try to split data science as opposed to infrastructure, as opposed to the decision maker and the product manager and the person who's actually uh, putting all the budget together. What has happened or rather where success comes together is, is when you put all of them together into one room or effectively when you have one person who's at least playing all of these roles, partially, or at least understands all of this area. Well, those, those people are pretty hard to find. Yes, and uh, in Amex, we have uh, at least found the magic to be able to uh, have few, um, in what you mentioned as unicorns, to be able to uh, play these different roles and be able to have that experience, but also be able to make decisions in these different areas. So to give you an example, when we land up building the mobile products, then you land up uh, uh, having to look at the data. So you need the um, data aspect, the data science aspect, and understand what the data quality issues and what patterns are there. And then come out with uh, suggestions of what kind of ideas or what kind of products can be built, have that discussion with the business leaders, and be able to help them prioritize that by building prototypes. So you also effectively play partially the product manager role. Then you come out with the budgeting aspect of saying, okay, here is how much it will cost and have that discussion again with the business folks and make sure that you uh, substantiate that to the executives and secure that, that funding that is required. And then obviously you also execute that aspect as the infrastructure person and make sure that it gets out the door in sort of production. So you have people who are playing all these roles partially uh, to be able to uh, get a product out the door. But you also need some kind of proof of concept. So mm -hmm. um, if you have someone in the business area who's trying to jumpstart this kind of transition mm -hmm. and they do something small, right? They make a small investment mm -hmm. and they demonstrate proof of concept mm -hmm. and then it grows from there. Mm -hmm. um, what's to prevent the, the growth from assuming some kind of random trajectory instead of growing in a way that is consistent and makes up a coherent strategy. strategy. Absolutely, so you're spot on and that's what a lot of corporations go through when they start with a big data investment because they start small, they say let's experiment with the big data. They try to get some of the data from uh, both internal within the company as well as external data, start to build these applications and then as, as they're building these applications, they find a few early adopters, take it to production, and out the door as that first uh, or two applications to show the ROI from that initial investment. What happens is once that uh, initial application is out the door, people start to see the value. And there are more and more requests for applications to be built without properly thinking through, well, this was just an experiment. We really need to have a structured process in place to make sure there is a data dictionary. You need to make sure the entire company can take advantage of it. Whatever applications are built, the insights have to be published such that everyone knows, yes, somebody has already taken uh, this application, built this insight. I don't need to do this work once more. What happens is that we go through that experimentation phase or the companies go through the experimentation phase and they get the product out the door there are more and more applications that are being built. You have redundancy of applications, resources, and data, which effectively 
then uh, cut down the benefit of the, the overall investment to begin with. So in Amex, obviously, we have been able to build that structured process in place such that all of our investments are being targeted in an efficient manner. Now, sometimes uh, when you launch an initiative like that, there's going to be some, some resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do it effectively and cost-effectively and strategically, it makes it easier to overcome that resistance. But could you talk a little bit about you know, why, uh, why there might be resistance to uh, a big data transformation within a company? company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a large part of the reason why there is resistance that is typically there is because of two different reasons. One is it's a cultural issue. Since a lot of, especially in large corporations, um, uh, what happens is there is a lot of investments that have been made into existing technology, into existing teams, and then for those corporations to uh, bring in a new technology, there is always organizational boundaries, there is always the question of what, how much ROI is this going to bring in, how much is this going to disrupt my current business, my cash cow, and what will this eventually uh, return for me. So that is one aspect. The other aspect is the entire skill set requirement because when you bring this new technology into the company, there is a whole set of new people that you have to hire and whole different mindset that you have to have about how you think about data, how you uh, take advantage of that data. So you need to bring this new skill set, have new training, all of that. And as humans go, there is always resistance to change. So that's the typical two uh, specific reasons why um, the companies, corporations resist uh, big data coming into um, the companies. The other one, the final one, is slightly on the cultural aspect. Because as big data goes, you, uh, you cannot go by the regular mechanism of starting with a business problem and backing into it and saying, I already know all the answers, just go execute it. You have a business problem, but then you need to have the data also help you answer how to solve the problem. So you have to approach it from the top down, but also bottoms up. So that mind shift has to happen within the corporation to say, yes, I am working on a business problem, so I, as a business leader, as I'm gonna say, here are the issues or the priority problems you need to work on, but I'm gonna work in tandem with the engineers who are coming out and telling me, or the analysts and the data science folks who are gonna tell me key insights of why this is happening and what is the best way to solve it. Don't, don't dictate a solution to them. Thank you, Rupesh, yeah, very much so. Thank you.